My name is Jay. My name is Rich. And this is a comic strip AP of Coriolis featuring the adventures of Samir Kanan in the Third Horizon. Previously, Samir was on Al Gol, or is on Al Gol, for some R&R with Dr. Wana and the rest of his Explorer crew. They ran across some Legionnaires. Uh, Samir got away, but unfortunately the pilot, Nima, was captured by Taba, who requested Samir come visit him, or something bad or untoward would happen to Nima. Yeah, yeah. Come visit him for a... Obviously, we just... To catch up, right? You know, maybe play some cards or something? Uh, I would like to think that, but he's got uh, Nima's fingers as uh, the ante if it's cards we're playing. Oh, I don't like this game. (laughs) So the scene opens on the Raz Tanzim Massif. So on Al Gol, there are certain uh, mountain ranges, massifs, that uh, have spaceports on them. The oldest and defunct one is Ras Tanzim. It is now a haven for Oper Farms and uh, Slaver Dens. Some ships still come in and out of there. Uh, one of the bays is held by Taba. So when the scene opens, Samir is already uh, at the Massif. He's already in the halls and the bays leading up to Taba's hangar. It's dark. It's under emergency power, so this kind of red lighting. It's quiet. There are no, no bodies, no souls around. You get to the hangar doors, uh, which are closed and locked when you get there. There are double doors for moving cargo in and out. And like I said, it's been pretty quiet all the way through the halls, all the way up to the level where his hangar is. All right. Well, I am armed. I am not coming here without a gun, especially here, here. So... Excellent. Uh, Excellent. I was going to ask that question. How did you arrive? What gear did you come with? What did you tell Dr. Wana? Ha. Huh. I told Dr. Wana that I needed to go and get Nima. That he called and he needed me to come get him. And I'll be right back. All right. No more, no less. No more, no less. Excellent. The uh, earlock pops. You can hear it cycle. And then the doors open. And uh, Taba hurries out. The door shut. And he punches some keys. And it cycles again and locks and he looks at you he's got a Vulcan carbine he actually has two one in each hand and he hands one to you are you armed? I take the gun I am now good 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 we've got some small problems I'm gonna need your help to get my ship and my hangar back then we talk you are trouble who's taking your ship? Uh, just some local rabble. Uh, these folks get uh, worked up on Opor. They forget where they are. They forget who's in charge of things. Uh, we get in here. We put these folks down. We talk about the job. We talk about getting your man back to you. It's like old times, Samir. It's good to see you. You ready to go to work? I'm ready to go to work, but you return my friend as soon as we retake the ship, and then we talk about the job. He's in cold storage right now. He's going to be fine. We talk about the job. I think we're going to get to some great terms. We'll do the job. I'll cut your friend loose. He's fine. He's sleeping. Cold stories. It's fine. Everything's good. Uh, let's do this. I have no trust for you. He cycles the lock. And the door slide open. There's a red laser dot that's scanning the hallway the far end. It's probably about 50 feet down before the next set of locks that open to the hangar bay. There's a drone kind of hovering in the area. Taba says, oh. And they've got, they've got two drones. Oh, thank you for this information. All right, so here's how combat works in Coriolis. You're going to roll a d6. You should have a initiative stat, and you'll add that to that. Highest values go first. I'm looking on the character sheet for an initiative. I don't see it under skills. You have combat vet, don't you? I do. All right, so you're going to roll two dice, and it's just a straight d6 roll. Oh, there's no add to it? It's just straight D6? Unless, yeah, unless you've got talents or other skills that alter that. It's just a straight D6 roll. That is crazy. Take the highest of the two? Yep, you take the highest of the two. I have a six. That means you're up first. So when the hall opens, it's dark. Uh, There's a laser sighting from one of the drones that's kind of hovering. It has a a graph pack in it, and that's what keeps it afloat. So it's kind of scanning the hall. You will go first. Top is behind you, then the drone. Okay. I side in. Uh huh. You gave me a carabine. I'll take a shot. I don't want to get too precise, so I'm going center mass. So it sounds like you're aiming and shooting. 
I will walk you through the whole spending of action points. Everyone gets three action points. Those cover your offensive and defensive actions. This isn't going to get too deep. This is just to give us a little taste of how it works, and we'll just keep building on it as we move forward. I think your weapon should have all your dice there on your character sheet. It does. And we're just looking for sixes. And I am using ranged combat? That's right, ranged combat. If your weapon says you get a bonus, you'll add an extra die for that. Ha <laughs> ha, two successes. Nice. You need one to hit. Every success after that does some extra things. You see where it says crit on your weapon? Yes. So if you get that many successes beyond the first, it causes a critical hit. Otherwise, you're doing the damage, which I think you're using a Vulcan Carbine, right? Yes. So that's three points of damage that you'll do. Then, like Edge of the Empire, you get to buy extra things with the extra successes you have. Ah, cool. Right? So uh, you could do extra damage. Uh, and if I would say if you do that, that will put the remote drone down. Let's just do that. All right. And that's nice and easy. Short and sweet. Yes. So unfortunately, though, the carbine makes a sound. It cracks. Uh, you hit the drone, and it sputters down and drops to the ground with a crash. Taba slaps you on the back. Oh, good shot. Sharp as ever. This is just like the old days. And then he starts to sprint down the hall a little bit, and he's pointing off to his right. What do you do? I go right. I know what he wants. He gets down to the end of the hall, and he starts to slow his pace down. There is a uh, opening on the right side, and he's uh, looking at you for the count. It looks like he's going to step out into the opening when you're ready. Okay. I crouch down. Uh, I want to get... Not prone, but I want to have take a knee, so I'm nice and stable. Right, right. Nice and so I'm going to be giving him cover, and then I give him a nod. All right, you can do it. All right. He steps around into the opening, and you can hear carbon fire from uh, two other rifles that just light him up as he steps into the opening. He tries to fire back, but he ducks back, and you can tell he's hit. He's got some grazing and some uh, shots. That uh, kind of spark off his uh, body armor. Okay, good. While they are still trained on him, mm-hmm. I slide in. I'm load a different plane, and uh, hopefully I can see from the muzzle flash. And I try to take them down. Nice. You make your ranged combat roll again. Okay. One success. All right. That's enough to put one of the riflemen down. Uh, and if you make a observation roll, I will tell you. You can see two figures in the hall, but if you make an observation roll, I will tell you what else you see. I got a limited success. Nice, 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 nice. So, Taba said, locals, oh, poor addicts, but these guys, uh, they have body armor on, they've got Vulcan weapons, they've got helmets, and when you add to that, that initial drone, these are a little more than Uper addicts. There's one guy left. He doubles back into what looks like a, like a cubicle farm kind of area, uh, office area, uh, just before you get into the bay proper where the vehicles and Taba ship is. So he kind of melts back into the interior walls, desks, things like that back there. Taba says, you go. I'll back you up. You're a lying piece of dung. These are not addicts. These are soldiers. Uh... Kinda. Uh, more like guards. I don't know why. They, well, I might know. If we can catch one, we can talk to one. But let's deal with that first. We can we can sort this out later. It's, this is like old times. They're the bad guys. We're the good guys. Let's take these guys out. Come on, Samir. We could do this. I do this for my friend, not you. And then I'll take off at a, a jog running low and hoping to stay out of the line of fire. But I'll try to advance. Tabo will cover you while you're trying to, to, to advance in. Let's make it a dexterity roll. You can add an extra die in for Taba helping since he's laying cover fire. Okay. I got a one success. Oh, nice. Nice, nice. That'll do it. That gets you in and not in a bad position. It gets you uh, separated from Taba, but closer in. You can see one more drone, and you can see the other rifleman trying to uh, boot that drone up and get it up in the air. So he's kind of distracted from you what do you do with that i'm gonna take a shot at him because a drone that's expensive that is that is expensive uh that will be a ranged combat check uh and you're short range so there's no penalties oh i have just got a critical success (laughs) nice that is two above so yes that's critical yes and that's that so there's a critical chart 
So roll 2d6, and we're going to read them like the percentile dice. Five and a one. So that's a critical hit, and that's a broken spine he has. So you, yeah, so your short burst, like, shoots him right up the spine. That takes him right out. That leaves the drone unhit. Taba says, okay, that's it. That was, that was it. There were two drones and two guards. I think we're clear. And he runs down to the end of the hall there and cycles the next lock. And covering him. He sticks his head through into the hangar bay and he shouts out. It's quiet. Nothing happens. And then he pops back in and he says, okay, we're good. He keys the command box that's there on the, on the airlock and brings up the interior lights and he lights up the hangar bay. He's got a modified scarab in the hangar bay. And he says, okay, I will call my people back. What do you remember about the colonel? That he has a drinking problem? I don't think he graduated with honors like he said. He's terrible with women and he always causes trouble. A lot like you. Maybe. But that old bird is dead now. And he had a will. Kinda. He had a couple of caches of stuff. Good stuff. There's one on Kua. I know that's where you're from. I know you know those jungles. Yeah. I will split it with you. Mm. Split it with me. So you give me back my pilot. Yes. I keep this drone. Drone's yours. Split that cash with me. I will split that cash with you. Whatever's in it. I'll let you have first pick. What are you not telling me? You remember how many people are in the company? Yeah. Some of them probably also know about these caches. <sighs> okay. Are they going to kill you for it? Uh, the colonel put away a lot of stuff from all the different missions he was in. He was going to—he was building a nest, that old bird. And so, you know, is it worth killing for? Yes, it's worth killing for. But you and me, uh, we could we could do this. I only want one. I, I know there's three. There's one on Kua. I only want one. And then I'm done. I'm out. It's enough for... You could go high. Do whatever. I gotta talk to my captain. But we gotta make this quick. Uh, you're not gonna tell her about these caches. Or what you're getting ready to go do. Shit. Look, I'll cut your guy loose. Let's just leave now. I, I hurl a few curses in frustration and kick something. Yes, yes, yes. Let Nima go. He can return to the ship. And I'll go with you. All right. I really do. I really don't like you. Oh, but you'd be rich. Come on, Samir, this is good. He starts to walk out to his ship. He grabs up a couple of duffel bags. He says, hey, grab those two. We'll get on my ship. I'll radio in. They'll cut Nima loose. And once we hit orbit, maybe maybe you could leave, leave a, a brief message. Uh, I hate for something to happen to your people while we're gone. And then we get to Kua. Okay. Yeah, let's do this. Let's do it. All right, perfect. And he, I mean, it happens just like that. You guys load his ship up. He uh, radios in to get Nima uh, released from cold storage. You guys hit orbit in his ship. The rest of his crew gets on. There's probably three other folks, uh, plus you two. That's it. Some cargo, some food stuff, um, some equipment. Your drone that you have now. He says, I will give you some uh, space. He takes you to your quarters. He says, I'll give you the comm channel. You can talk to your people. Whatever you need to do, I appreciate you going on this mission with us. And he gives you some space and some quiet time. Okay. And I love Dr. Wana. It's calm to calm, so I reach out directly to her. Yes, okay, perfect. And she answers. She's on the ship. She says, uh, where's Nima? Where, where are you? What's going on? I'm ready to leave. Hold up my hands. Nima is safe. He's on his way back to you. And? And I'm not. Not right now. Listen... You know that talk that you said that we should have? Yes, you and this Legion trouble you have. Well, the trouble has found me. I have to go do a job with them. I'm going off planet. I could be gone for a week or more. I think this will solve it. This will settle my trouble. And I'm sorry to... I'm, I'm sorry. I hope that you have it in your heart that when I come back we can work things out. If everything works out, I can pay some money for forgiveness, but I have to do this, Dr. Wana. That's not how family works, Samir. We're supposed to all be in this together. It's the only way I could get Nima safe, is to agree to this. In a week's time, we'll be on Coriolis Station. I hope you catch up with us then. If I haven't, I'm dead. I'll do everything I can. Thank you, Dr. Wana, thank you. 
And she cuts the, the comm channel. She's not happy, though. Neither am I. When you uh, get off the comm channel, there's a call from Taba over the ship's comms. And he says, Samir, can you come to the bridge, please? I hate that tone. Unarmed, please? Yeah, well, I'm not coming unarmed. I got my Dura knife. (laughs) (laughs) You arrive to the bridge, and the pilot is still in his chair navigating, and the rest of the crew are in kind of like zip ties and are seated two on one side taba and the other on the other side and there's a woman in a long dark robe she's got a cylinder in her hand uh, and it's kind of flashing three red lines in a row down the end you recognize that if her fingers come off of that cylinder everything goes boom and she says uh samir if you would restrain yourself and have a seat along with the others that would be great Soundscape music was found on TabletopAudio.com. If you want awesome music for your game sessions, try TabletopAudio.com. Hi, this is Jason from The Gauntlet. If you enjoyed this episode of Comic Strip AP, be sure to check out our YouTube channel. We have many other Comic Strip AP shows available, each organized in their own sequential playlist for easy listening. Just go to YouTube.com and search for Gauntlet RPG.